Hi, this is an internal recording of Prakap 2.0 project, which is an extension of uh, original Prakap project, not only in terms of uh, the uh, coverage in square meters and the number of uh, objects that are being tracked, but especially in the terms of uh, uh, the number of use cases and applications of uh, RTLS for the Prakap company. The project has been done uh, for partner Zellabs, and the customer here is uh, Prague based cabling company, which is producing cables for uh, energy sector, for transportation sector, uh, huge cables that are being used in like uh, railways or in, uh, um, in, the, in the underground metro. And uh, what is interesting here that such a company has a huge turnover, which is comparable to the GDP of a small country, let's say uh, Comoros Islands. And, uh, that also means that if we as a server will be able to help them to save even a little percentage of the material that they are using for the production, which is usually copper, aluminium and other costly metals, it will actually have huge results on a financial side. And that's also the biggest goal or aim of the project to decrease the material losses throughout the production. And beside that, uh, they want to monitor the production flow uh, so they can improve the processes and also uh, to have a real-time uh, inventory overview of the work in progress. Such a project in a cabling uh, industry is always challenging by the nature of uh, uh, the sector because uh, such a hole is full of uh, metallic objects and not only that uh, if you put the tag on a, on a coil as you can see on the photo uh, these coils tend to crash with each other uh, then they also go to a rotating machine when they are ro being rotated on a high speed and the tech needs to survive all of that. In this project uh, we've been covering 13,000 square meters both indoors and outdoors. Uh, to do so we used 50 anchors. Uh, the accuracy was anywhere between 3 to 40 centimeters depending on the location and the use case. And we are tracking here uh, 12 uh, matter handling devices, forklifts and then 100 plus other objects, which are usually uh, the cause, as is again on the, on the picture. One thing which makes the solution really interesting is uh, uh, tagless tracking. Tagless tracking delivered by our partner Zellabs. And uh, the way it works is that if you want to track uh, a bigger thousands of uh, objects, instead of having a thousands of tags on each of these objects, we are tracking only the things that are moving them, uh, because that gives us uh, the exact location. The only thing we need to add to this is the actual identification uh, of the thing that is being moved by the forklift. Uh, to describe that on this picture, the way tagless tracking works is that when the forklift approach uh, the material that uh, needs to be uh, loaded and moved to some new position, the camera reads the QR code uh, which is on the material and that's basically the identification. At that moment the system knows what is being loaded. Then there is a weight sensor on the fork of the forklift and that tells us is if the loading really happened or not. And since that moment uh, the UWB tag sends us the a position. The tag is being uh, mounted on the ceiling of the, of the forklift and it's being powered from within the machine. Uh, then the forklift is being navigated uh, with the material to its uh, final destination. And at that place, the lift sensor tells us how high is the forklift, which means how high is actually the material. And the weight sensor tells us if the material has been already unloaded. So at that moment, we, we, we know what was taken from where, how it went to its final destination, when it was unloaded, and also at uh, which level, which height. So that's a combination of 2D and 3D tracking. Uh, the same thing is now shown on a different picture. So these are six different components that uh, we need to uh, do the tagless tracking. So again, it's the UWB tag for the position, the QR com uh, camera for the identification, the lift sensor so we can have uh, the third dimension, how high uh, uh, the material was uh, loaded or loaded. Uh, weight sensor to make sure that the unloading loading process really happened. And then there is a tablet, uh, LCD tablet uh, uh, in uh, the forklift, 
so the forklift operator sees the instruction on, on the screen. And then there is the connectivity bo box, which basically connects all of these sensors uh, with the system. So here in Praka, we are using uh, this uh, 12 pegs on 12 forklifts to uh, tracking the movement of uh, more than uh, 10,000 of coils. Well, for some other use cases, we are tracking the coils itself, but for this uh, majority and the bigger number of coils, we are actually using this uh, tagless tracking uh, system. Now, uh, Zellabs has a pretty unique uh, technology. They are able to uh, add this tagless tracking to any major uh, type uh, of uh, forklift. And this video shows uh, how much time they actually need to uh, make this happen. Uh, so be prepared uh, for a Formula One pit stop experience. That was the connectivity box. Now Adrian is adding the QR uh, code camera. Now he lost, I think, additional two seconds. Uh, so I guess it can be actually even quicker uh, than the result. Is Twenty nine seconds. So that was it. And now let's move from solution to the different uh, applications, uh, use cases for the system. The most important one is decreasing the usage of material. Uh, to have the final cable, uh, you need to combine 12 to 18 different uh, coils. And now these coils come into the production uh, machine. And because this is a human operated uh, process, it sometimes happens that a wrong combination of coils goes uh, into the production, which also means that they need to come with that. And to make sure that the final outcome that the cable will be of a certain quality, uh, then uh, there was, was some buffer added. But buffer also means that they are losing some material because ideally they need to produce exactly what the customer wants without any additional buffer to make sure that the quality is met. And that really goes against the, the, the human operation because of course any process done by human is prone to errors. And this is where RTLS really takes place uh, because now we know which exact calls are going into the production and they can better plan which should go there and they can really minimize uh, the, the errors happening in this uh, stage of the process. And that's it's resulting to 2% of uh, copper being uh, saved uh, annually and that's a huge financial impact. Second application is search and find. Uh, so as you saw, uh, the forklift drive has a LCD display uh, in its forklift uh, and that uh, exactly tells him uh, where is the uh, next call that he needs to pick up uh, uh, being located. And not only that, but if uh, there are multiple calls at the same type and quality, uh, the system tells the driver uh, which one is closer. So that's again uh, saving uh, some of the travel and the time. And uh, the time that they needed for searching on a monthly basis corresponds to uh, 10,400 euros that they are now saving because they are no longer searching. Uh, a third use case here is the navigation. And this is pretty straightforward because we can think of it about uh, in a way that is a Waze or Google Maps that we're using in our cars. So basically the forklift driver knows exactly uh, where is his next um, pick and he's also being navigated there, taking into account uh, also the current situation, etc. And the system also verifies uh, if uh, he's unloading uh, at, a, at the right place uh, as well. And so all this navigation leads to the fact that they were able to save two uh, forklifts out of 14 uh, forklifts. That's a 12% decrease in the material handling operational cost. 
Now uh, gain a short video uh, which shows a uh, forward moving uh, a huge bar. And you can see in the real time how uh, this is actually shown in the, in the, in the, in the facility. Uh, and also you can see which sensors are now working on a, uh, on a forward. And you can see the, the pretty great uh, accuracy of the system. Now the next one is uh, warehouse utilization, and we see this uh, quite often with the RTLS uh, project as well. That basically, once we know uh, how things are being loaded out in the warehouse, we are able to better plan it. And we always see that uh, in most of the projects, it goes anywhere between 10 to 20 percent. Here it's actually 15 percent, which basically means that uh, without uh, adding uh, additional space within the warehouse they actually grew it by 15% just because they are they have a better knowledge and insight how the current one is being used and they can uh, improve that uh, process. Uh, the fifth one is increased safety and this is this is pretty uh, uh, easy as well because now uh, when the forklift driver doesn't need to leave the safety of the forklift to scan the material uh, there is actually less dangerous situations when forklift drivers are outside of their of their machine. Uh, of course, at that moment they are like easier to being hit by additional forklift driver, etc., or anything moving. So this is really the, the fact that they can stay within the forklift. It's really uh, increasing uh, the safety aspect as well. Uh, then. Uh, Knowing uh, where uh, where and how much of the work in progress is, is, is now being located, you can very easily optimize the, the inventory and uh, move it more towards like just in time production. Uh, so that's that's number six and a big thing for a uh, prac up. Uh, number seven is definitely the advanced analytics, including heat maps and uh, spaghetti diagrams, uh, which again helps to identify the bottlenecks in the workflows and uh, opportunities to, to increase uh, I mean, um, the efficiency of the, of the process. And the very last one is the boasted OEE, because for each of these 12 focus, we now have the distance traveled, we have the run and stop times, we have the loaded unloaded times, and we have also the, the exact movement of each of the forklifts. So what else we need really to uh, optimize the process? So they will basically use each of the forklifts in a much more efficient, efficient uh, way. Now to uh, to sum sum it up, there was two percent decrease of copper usage, and that's that's a huge thing, uh, given the nature of the cost of the of the metal. Then on a monthly basis, it's uh, more than 10k that is being saved because we just cut off the uh, unproductive uh, search time. Uh, then uh, there are no longer two forklifts needed. That's 12 percent on uh, uh, decreasing the cost of uh, material handling devices, and last but not least, the 15 percent on the increase of uh, warehouse utilization. You can read the uh, full case study on our website, and on top of that, uh, we have uh, infographics called "Creating uh, Forklift of the Future." which also uh, have all of the explanation uh, about uh, the tagless uh, tracking and uh, how this could be leveraged in a different industrial projects. Thank you for watching.